Hello, everyone. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hope you're all uh, surviving the long day. Um, there's actually two of us here from Unity. Uh, I am. I run the business in Southeast Asia, so I'm basically running a uh, sales business development partnership. And I have an evangelist by the name of Brett. Uh, he's actually an engineer and a technical person. And he's. We were supposed to be giving talks one after the other, but he's with all the scheduling. He's actually giving a talk. I think it's 15 minutes from now. Yeah, so his talk is on. Uh, building plugins and how to integrate with Unity using the plugin architecture, which is far more technical. So if this, just to let you know that if you're interested in the technical side, you get technical questions, you might want to join his session, which starts in about 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, just wondering how many of you are familiar with uh, Unity? Is there a fair number? Okay, so everybody's familiar with it. Do you make use of it? Okay. Okay, so what I'm actually going to give more. I'm not a serious games expert. I run Unity across everything. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a history of Unity, where it's come from, why Unity has become so popular, where it, where it sits, and then kind of show you some examples of what has been done in the serious games side. We actually put serious games under simulation, visualization, uh, and serious games. So you'll see examples that I'm showing that are not necessarily a serious game application per se, but it's, it's, it's in the same area. So what is Unity? Um, Unity is a game engine. Uh, what does a game engine do? It's essentially, the technical word is a real, well, technical from my perspective, <clears throat> it's a real-time rendering engine. So basically, when you're making a game and you're playing a game, things change. Uh, if, I do, if I move left, if I move right, if I move forward, a different action is going to happen in the game. The, the game engine manages that interaction. So that's where we actually see the game engines being traditionally done for video games, which have been very demanding and have moved up to very high levels of, of demands. And using that same core technology, which is something is interaction involved, we must uh, need an engine that's actually going to be able to render and show a different image based on an action. That's where we see game engines really expanding into other areas. A serious game is, of course, being another type of game. But simula simulations, visualizations, anything where there is a, is a, something happens as a result of an action. So there's a cause and effect. The, this, I think, is somebody's marketing copy, so it's rather word heavy. Uh, but basically, where Unity has really found its place is a comp component-based architecture. And I'll get into some of the background and why Unity actually has this component-based architecture and what that means for developers. So the easiest way to explain Unity, I found, uh, is to talk about what's the origins of the game, of the engine. Where's it from? Basically, three guys finished a computer science degree in Denmark, decided, what are we going to do with our lives? What are we going to do with ourselves next? Let's build a game. They went around, looked, said, OK, what's the first thing we need? We need an engine. OK, what options are available? Well, we can go look at licensing an engine. The cheapest one at the time was $100,000. These are three students right out of school. That wasn't going to happen. Uh, essentially, at that time, you either built your engine or you licensed one. And if you licensed the engine, it was typically built for an, a very specific game. And then you took that engine and you retooled it to do what you needed. So there was always a fair amount of development involved. I said, OK, we're going to build our game. First thing let's do is build an engine. So they spent two years, built the engine, came out with this game that I can't never remember the name. I think it was Google, But the game never went anywhere. It wasn't very successful at all. But they had built a good technology. And I kind of said, OK, two years later, what have we got to show? We've got a game that wasn't very successful, and we've got this tool. Kind of, when they actually decided they wanted to build a game, they had no idea what game they wanted to build, which is a little bit of a backwards way of going into it. But they said, well, let's build an engine that's going to be flexible and allow us to build different types of games. So they actually came in and said, what can we build that allow us to do a platform to game, a role-playing game, a first-person shooter game? How can we, let's build an engine that's going to give us that flexibility. When they came out into the market with this engine, it was still, no, the version one obviously was not fully baked and didn't have all the features, but it was an engine that people could start to build on top of, as opposed to, we're going to need the source code, we've actually got to rework the source code, and we've got to, um, 
do a lot of work just to get it to do what we want to do. This was an engine. This was an engine that was designed to be able, built on top of. So it's got a plug-in architecture that essentially uh, you don't need source code to make modifications because you can write a plugin. So the plugin ar plugin architecture is like an SDK. You write a plugin, works off of that arc, and plugs directly into the core of the engine. So it's actually made it a really easy tool to build on. And this is where, in the gaming world, it's really actually proven to be very popular. So the component-based architecture, which allows Brett, he compares it to a box of Lego. You get it, it's a box of Lego, you can do what you want with it, as opposed to being restricted because the engine is designed to, for a specific game and pushing you in a, certain, in a specific way. This, of course, has made it easy to use outside of video games because you can build on it, you can do what you want with it. Uh, I'll get into a slide later on that shows that probably it's less than half of the use of Unity is actually in video games. It's used a lot in many other areas just besides the games. Just, yeah, the company has done very well. Uh, it was originally launched for the Mac. They couldn't, when they were first developing games, there was no game engine on the Mac. They developed on the Mac. Good fortune, they developed just before iOS came out. iOS requires you to develop on a Mac. They extended Mac, they had the Mac, they extended iOS, and were one of the first engines available for iOS and actually launched at uh, uh, 2005 at the WWDC. And they caught on to the other thing that they caught on to that's really made Unity powerful is multi platform. So a single engine works on PC, works on Mac, going to work on Linux, and the platform you can publish to, you can publish to that same game you build. It's, yes, it is shift through a menu. Pick a new platform, build for it. You probably have to do a little bit of a bit of tweaking, not uh, very little realistically, but you still have to do some tweaking and optimization. But you can actually develop your core game for PC, for example. Turn around and uh, publish that on Mac. Turn around, and publish that on the online. Publish on Android. Publish on iOS very easily. So these are the two things that we see have pushed people or pushed the Unity adoption. People want to have a game, publish it to multiple platforms. People want to have a start a new different type of game and they need a basic engine that they can build on. And this is really where Unity has found its niche and its strength. Um, yeah, there's a lot of marketing um, language here and the only thing to really highlight on these two slides about the philosophy is that Unity places a great amount of emphasis on the community and a great amount of emphasis on the independent developer. So these guys were looking they found these engines that were licensed $100,000 per title, unlimited number of engineers, made it really hard for a team with two to three engineers to make the, raise the money. So this is where Unity has also come in with a sales mo a business model whereby you li buy one license per developer. So you can actually, as a standalone developer, you can buy 1500 US, you can buy a copy of the engine. Uh, it's actually a free version you can use to get started. You can buy a copy of the engine and publish and publish as many games as you want. That's really, so they've really placed this emphasis on the independent developer. Now it's used by larger studios, yes, but they really do look at how do we make it easy for the small studio, for the small developer to do. And what I found as I run Southeast Asia is across Southeast Asia, you do not have the teams with the size or the experience to actually use on Unreal or Crytek, which are very powerful engines, much more powerful than Unity. And the smaller engines, the Coronas, the Marmalades, require additional engineering expertise to use. Uh, they're not really designed for games. They can be used for games or designed more for apps. And that has meant that you, you actually need to build more to the engine. And Unity has really become the default engine for this region. Smaller teams, independent studios, people who need an easy to use tool that's designed for small teams to use. That's really made Unity, it's, Unity's kind of fit. So, that's the background. <clears throat> it's now become the number one engine in mobile. I think some 58% of mobile games are developed in Unity. But it also does stretch across all these other platforms. So specific PC, Mac, uh, the online, so web player version in a browser, Flash, uh, Windows 8, Windows 8 tablet, Windows 8 mobile, iOS, Android, and all the consoles. I think I've, and Linux, I think I've hit them all. So across all platforms that you want to publish to. And we're seeing a lot of schools in, in the serious game side, a lot of people are adopting, we want, yes, we want the initial training to be done online, or we want initial training to be done on a PC, but we also want training that people can take with them. And we want them to be able to take that with them on an iPad, 
Well, we want, there's companies that are doing training. Yes, the guy comes in and he does training on how to use the equipment and how to use a piece of machinery. But when he's out in the field, we want that person to be able to access that training because they may not be use that training every month. They may use, only use it every three months. And that's where we've seen uptake. Uh, so the web player, uh, this is very strong uh, across all, uh, of course, many markets. But then there's the, also the working with middleware. So when you're using Unity, features people really like, just pull it into auto, for, pull it into Autodesk. Uh, anything, anything from Autodesk, anything from Adobe, you can just pull it right into the product. It's very uh, straightforward. Now, sorry, this is sounding very much like a sales presentation. So why don't I, which is not the case, but as my expertise is not in the um, serious games, let me just kind of now at least play a video and give you an idea. This is a video compilation of different applications that have been done in simulation and serious game space. And it gives you an idea of what can be done with the platform. Now, this, keep in mind, this was done for a military conference. Uh, so it's got a very strong military flavor. But it gives you a good idea. And that's not showing up over there. models that you could actually purchase.
Where's my... Uh, This is what I'm referring to in terms of use. Uh, okay, so it's pretty hard to see. But the blue is advertising graphics architecture media. Um, I can't even read it. The red is uh, prosumers, universities, education, game publishers, and gaming. So it's a, actually a very diverse use of Unity, and it's the it's the fact that the game engine, people started off, yes, with games, but people are realizing more and more, anywhere you've got interaction, you actually need this engine to drive that interaction and the results. So these, again, are just some uh, applications. <coughs> so I've actually got another demo, I won't play it, but another demo of a, from a company in Vietnam that actually was looking at an architectural side. So how do we take that architectural model, add interior design, and then allow people to come in and choose the different, what type of wall paint do they want? What type of finishing do they want? What's it gonna look like? And how's that gonna impact the overall view and people could do a walkthrough? Uh, so in terms of the shift controls and application that allows you to create these visualizations, um, again, serious games, interactive training and simulations, applications, there's a lot of, Kind of, it allows you, it's like a, it really is like a box of Lego. You can come in and you can create what you want. Uh, the nature of the engine also allows for very rapid prototyping. Because you don't have to undo anything. You're basically building. You can actually prototype very quickly. Uh, we're actually seeing across the region adoption in most schools, most university programs around game development based on the fact of the ease of rapid uh, prototyping. Students want to build a project in there's one uh, actually school, oh, ITV, is talking, telling me they want to do a master's program in game design. He's the gentleman's in the room. Uh, when they want to do 18, they need to do 18 prototypes in a year period. And you need to be able to build those quickly. Uh, for a lot of companies that want to showcase something, they want to build a prototype quickly to see what it looks like, Unity just allows you to do that very quickly. Um, so again, just various uh, examples of where it's being used and how it's being used. Uh, so all of these are, are possible. Uh, in Unity, there's a few, let me just get, uh, there's a few customized products, customized bundles that have been created. Um, the clustering capability, um, cave ability. There's a few abilities, but most people are actually going in and building on top of what's there. Um, so that is, maybe I'll allow a, the schedule to catch up a little bit, but that is pretty much most of what I uh, wanted to share with you, just to give you a little bit of background on Unity itself. <coughs>